This podcast is going to look at a horizontal net force problem. In this problem, there will be some up and down forces that are significant to solving the problem, but we're going to, in the end, look at just the back and forth net force to determine what distance is required to bring a car to a stop when you slam on the brakes. So here's the scenario where we're looking at in this problem. A 1500 kilogram car is traveling at 20 meters per second when the driver slams on the brakes. The coefficient of sliding friction between the tires and the road is 0 0.350. I'm going to draw a free body diagram for the car. I'm then going to use that to calculate an acceleration rate. And then once I have the acceleration rate, I'm going to determine what stopping distance is required to bring the car to a stop. So let's look back at the free body diagram. The purpose of a free body diagram is to show us all of the significant forces acting on a vehicle so we can picture that in our heads and use those to then solve the problem. In terms of up and down forces, there are significant forces that we have to consider in this problem. There's the force of gravity pulling downwards on the car. And then there's the normal force. A normal force is a force applied by some surface to an object that's on that surface. And so in this case, the surface is applying an upward force to the car that's equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force of gravity. So in an up and down direction, no net force. In terms of back and forth directions, when we're trying to stop the car, we take our foot off the gas and put it on the brake. So because of that, there's only one significant force in a back and forth direction, and that's the force of friction. I'm going to call it the force of friction instead of an applied force because we use friction uh, with brakes to stop cars, plus there's friction on the road and stuff, so we'll just go with that. So there's my free body diagram. Now I'm going to use that free body diagram to find the acceleration rate of the car, and I'm going to work backwards a little bit as I solve this multi-step problem. For starters, I'm going to list my information. I know the mass of the car is 1,500 kilograms. I know its initial velocity is 20 meters per second. I know the coefficient of friction is 0 0.350. And I'm trying to find an acceleration rate. So A equals question mark. So if you think about it, why do things accelerate? Well, we've talked about the fact that things accelerate because of net forces. We've talked about Newton's second law, which says F net is equal to M times A. It's written like that on your data sheets. So that's the last equation I'm going to use to solve this problem. Well, if I look at my free body diagram, what are the forces acting on the car and what does the net force consist of? If I look at my up and down forces, they're equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, so they just cancel each other out. So basically, I can summarize everything there by saying F net is equal to the force of friction. That's the only significant force acting on the car in terms of a net force. Well then, how do I calculate the force of friction based on the information I have? Well, we've talked about the coefficient of friction equation. And we've said that the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times Fn. So if I can find Fn, I know the coefficient of friction, I can find the force of friction. Well, what is Fn, F normal? We've talked about the fact that normal means perpendicular to, and when something's resting on this surface, the normal force, or the force applied upwards by the road, is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force of gravity. So I can say Fn is equal to negative Fg. Well, we've talked about the fact that the force of gravity is equal to m times g, so... My normal force is equal to negative the mass, which is 1,500 kilograms, times g, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So the force normal is equal to 14,715 newtons. So if my coefficient of friction is 0 0.350, and my normal force is 14,715, then my force of friction has a magnitude of 5,150 newtons. So back over here, the force of friction is 5,150 newtons, and the direction of it, it's in the opposite direction that the car is traveling. So I'm going to put a negative in front of that force of friction. 
So if I go one step down, the net force is 5150. My mass is 1500 kilograms. So my acceleration rate will be negative 3.43 meters per second squared. So now I'm going to find the required to bring the car to a stop. And here I'm going to rely on some kinematics from chapter one. So I'm trying to find what distance is required to stop the car. I know from the original question the velocity is 20 meters per second to start with. If I'm coming to a stop, my final velocity is 0 meters per second, and I just figured out that my acceleration rate is negative 3.43 meters per second squared. So if I look at my listed information, the equation that comes to mind is Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. If I rearrange that, I come up with d is equal to Vf squared minus Vi squared all over 2a. I plug in my values, so I get 20 squared on the top divided by, in brackets, 2 times negative 3.43 meters per second squared. And when I punch that all out, I come up with a distance of 58.3 meters.